And I think we've already had church. You're going to have church where God is. You're going to have church where he's welcome and where the Holy Spirit has latitude to move in our lives and in our hearts. And I pray tonight that you will just let him have his way with you. And when this service is all over tonight, that you can go home and tell somebody, it's been good to be here. It's been good to be here. What a joy it is to be in Sparta tonight and to be able to come to uh, people of like-mindedness. And I believe people that loves God and people that worship God like God's supposed to be worshiped. You can't worship God without the Holy Spirit being alive. And we know tonight that he's present here in the midst. We appreciate all of you that have taken your time to be here tonight. And the invitation to be in Sparta tonight, to be in Sparta. We saw Saltes having church on the street up here. <laughs> but, uh, but we're glad we're having church here tonight. Appreciate the good folk from Pine Mountain coming down tonight and being with us. We had more that was coming, but they're in jail. Hell, <laughs> uh, but we're glad that these were out. Some of them may be before the night's over, but <laughs> we thank you for being here tonight. Uh, Joshua chapter 14, if you have your Bibles tonight, let me read from that portion of scripture. I feel like the Lord might have us just to say a few words to your heart tonight and your hearing concerning uh, this man called Caleb. I like to talk about Caleb. He's a powerful man, powerful man with God. And he teaches us something tonight, and I believe he'll bring something to you in his life if we obey the Holy Spirit here this evening. Joshua chapter number 14. If you've got to say amen. 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 All right. And these are the countries which the children of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed for inheritance to them. By lot was their inheritance, as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses for the nine tribes and for the half tribe. For Moses had given the inheritance of two tribes and a half tribe on the other side, Jordan. But unto the Levites he gave none inheritance among them. For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. Therefore they gave no part unto, no part to the Levites in the land, save cities to dwell in with their suburbs for their cattle and for their substance. As the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Then the children of Judah came into Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when, when I, Moses, was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, set me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land. And I brought him word again, as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thou feet, thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord thy God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old, and as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was in, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, if I therefore give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in that day, for thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron, for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron before was Kerathabar, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. 
Notice the desire and the heartbeat in verse number 12 of Caleb when he said, Lord, give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. I want you to ponder that in your minds tonight as we think of this scripture and think of the principles and the truths that are recorded within it that are released to us tonight through this word that God has given me. Give me this mountain. What a miraculous time it was when God went down into the land of Egypt through a man named Moses and brought the people in that exodus after 400 years slavery brought them out into the land that he had promised them. It was not a promise that was fresh to them. It was a promise that was made to Abraham many years prior to that. Many years that he told that he would bring them into a land that he would give to them, the land of Canaan. And God brought them out. You remember the story there that God sent them there because of their disobedience of God, because of their sin against God. And when God had them there, they mourned and they cried unto God because of the laboring there, the hardships that were up on them there. And God heard the cry. You remember the story how the, one night old Moses was out under the stars and he came by a bush and the bush was, was on fire. And God spoke to him out of that Bush and said, Moses, Moses, take your shoes off, Moses, for your own holy ground. And God had, had ordained all along that Moses would be his man to go down into the land of Egypt and lead those people out. You know the rebellion of Moses. He said, I'm not the man. I don't speak well. But brother, when God's got a plan, he's got a plan. And God had a plan to release his people out of that Egyptian bondage. You know all the story there how that God miraculously went down and with Moses there, showed Pharaoh that God meant business and releasing of his people. And Pharaoh let him go. You know the story there, how he brought him through the Red Sea and there destroyed the Pharaoh's army and uh, led them on into the land of Canaan. Forty-five years have passed since that time and they're in the land now. And here in our text tonight, God has told Moses to... to lot out the land to the tribes of Israel to give them their land that is identified for each tribe. You read that, you will find how that God uh, geographically laid that out. It's a wonderful thing that when God has a plan that he carries it out to the most minute detail. But it's a wonderful thing when you look at this that each one of them had their own portion of land yonder in the Canaan land. Marked by God. Marked by God. Amen. But here's a man by the name of Caleb. Caleb's been on the scene before. You remember he, he, he's a man of faith. He's a man uh, uh, of faithfulness to God. He's a man uh, uh, that, 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 that has some, some spirit about him. He understands that what God said he was going to do, he was going to do. He stuck with God for 85 years now. He stuck with God. 40, 40 years and above, brother, he has followed God in the wilderness into this land that God has given. Now Caleb and it comes to him, he remembers the promise that, that Moses made to him 45 years prior, amen, that he was going to give him the mountain of Hebron. And there God was going to bless him there and give him that land. It couldn't be taken from him because of the promise of God. And brother, he reminds them now that they're lotting out the land, that he has an inheritance there already given to him, already has the title deed to him. Yeah. Amen. God has already put his stamp up on it, that it belongs to old, old, old Caleb. And Caleb reminds him here, said, said, give me my mouth and give me my mouth. He said, I'm able to take it. I'm able to drive the enemies out. I'm strong as this day as I was 45 years prior. I'm able to go in and possess that which the Lord has given me. Give me this mountain. Brother, it was his heartbeat. It was something, Lord, that was real to Caleb here in this time. I can almost see him and see his face light up as he thinks about that which is going to be his. Brother, he had laid under that Arabian desert, looked up into the sky many a time and thought about the time, amen, that he would occupy that land that God had given him. He couldn't get away from that. Didn't make any difference whatever was happening. It was his dream. It was his heartbeat. It was everything, everything that made any difference to him at this particular time. He said, give me my mountain. Give me my mountain. He knew that God had that waiting for him. Amen. And right now that God, amen, was going to give it to him. And brother, sister, that's a wonderful thing. I want to talk to you tonight about your mountain. 
I want to talk to you tonight that's what's in your heart, what's in your life, amen, that's rising up in your mind tonight that God might be able to do for you right here in this service tonight. That you might rise up and say, Lord, give me my mountain. I don't know what that may represent in your life. I know what it is in my life. But brother, sister, you've got something in your life tonight that you need to bring to God and say, Lord, give me my mountain here tonight. Lord, I believe that you're able to do for me what you did for Kate that you're able to bring it to pass. Well, how am I going to do that, Pastor? Well, I'm going to tell you tonight how you can do that, that we can receive our mountain tonight, whatever it may be. I want you to look deep in yourself tonight and find out what is the greatest need that you have in this service tonight. I want you to declare it before God. Hallelujah. I want to say to you tonight that you're not a stranger to God tonight. If so be that you're born again of the Spirit of God, you're not a stranger to God tonight. He knew that you was going to be in the Sparta Church of God on this Friday night here in June the 2nd, 2017. And he knew that you was going to bring a need through those doors, that you was going to have to stand up before this service is over and say, Lord, give me my mountain. Lord, I believe that you have something for me tonight that I can receive here in this place tonight. Well, how are we going to do it, Pastor? Well, I'm going to have to use uh, Caleb as an example. First of all, you've got to desire it. What do you desire from God tonight? I want to ask you something. First of all, do you have anything in your life that's greater in your desire than God himself? Brother, that's what we need to desire first is God himself. That's what Caleb did. Caleb wholly followed the Lord. Over and over again, you read that in the text tonight. He wholly followed the Lord. We've got to desire God. We've got to believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. We've got to believe that what we ask Him for, He's well able to do. And when we do, beloved, we'll have our desire laid out and spread out before the Lord. Well, you've got to claim it. You've got to be specific in it. When you come to the house of God uh, here tonight, there, there's something specifically sitting in your life. If I, if I would take, take a raising of hands right now, I'll guarantee you that 75% of the hands in this congregation will go up. I have a need. I need to claim this need, this specific need in my life. I don't want to pray for about a thousand things. I've got one thing that's on my mind and in my heart tonight. I've got one thing that I need to bring before God. I need to claim that here tonight. You need to desire it. You need to claim it. And you need to understand that you earn that tonight by virtue of the fact that you are wholly following the Lord. Now, I can't expect God to bless me tonight if I'm not wholly following the Lord. Amen. If I choose to follow Him afar off, I've got, I, I, I've got to close that distance. I got to do something, amen. I got to look inside of myself and see why I'm not walking, amen, hand in hand with God. I got to see why, amen, that I'm not walking in the spirit, walking in the truth. If there's sin in my life, I've got to leave it on these altars. I got to get it under the blood. If there's something that's hindering me tonight, I've got to lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset me. And I've got to get back in this race and run like God wants me to run. I've got to earn this blessing of God tonight. Amen. I've got to be able to receive it. I've got to be able to, to, to reach out to it and, and understand that God has the grace for my life tonight. That's, that's, that's Caleb. Something interesting about old Caleb tonight. He's a man of faith. You always see that. Brother, when they went over and spied out the land, <laughs> old Caleb and Joshua and that bunch of wimpy a wimpy church member that went with him. Amen. Went over in the land and came back and gave a bad report. Ten of them that gave a bad report. Old Joshua and Caleb stands up and says, says, not like that. Said, 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 there's a bunch of giants down in that land, a bunch of Anakimes, and uh, they're bad people, no doubt. But said, Lord, they're nothing for us. And uh, here, here's each wimpy crowd standing over there, shaking into sandal. Says, We'd be like a bunch of grasshoppers compared to them. But Joshua and Caleb said, Brother, we're able to take it, so let's go take it. That's 
take. They doesn't seem to land. They got hungry for the blessing of God. Hallelujah. They wanted to receive it. Caleb still had Hebron on his mind. He couldn't get it out of his mind. He said, we well able to say. He was a man of faith. He was a man that trusted in what God had said. God had been faithful to them, brother, since the time he brought them out of the land, into that land. Now they're ready to occupy and take control of what God has promised them. Hebron is still in the mind of old Caleb, and he wants to receive it. How bad do you want to receive your mountain tonight? How bad do you want to be blessed of God tonight in this house of God here this evening? He was a man of faith. Brother, he's a man of fortitude. That means he had guts. I'm just no country boy. That's what it means. Uh, he, he had guts. Yeah. He was able to stand up against the devil and shake his fist right in his face. Yeah. Hallelujah, knew who God was. Yeah. Brother, I wonder sometime here in the year 2017 if we really know who God is anymore. Yeah. If we really understand that we serve a God of might and power tonight. We serve a God that's able to move in our lives and up on our mountains, whatever they may be, and move them out of our lives tonight. We used to preach that and teach it. Hallelujah. In the Pentecostal church and the church of God. We don't do that much anymore. But I'll tell you tonight, I'm here in the spot of North Carolina to declare to you tonight that God is still on the throne. He hadn't moved one iota. He is able tonight to do whatever we ask of him even beyond what we ask of him here tonight. He was a man of faith and fortitude. He's a man that was fervent. That means he was ready. He was ready, ready in spirit, brother. He was a spirit-filled man. Uh, brother Stewart, you sure? I'm sure about that. When I read about the rest of them, brother, I know that old Caleb and Joshua were spirit-filled. God had his hand up on them, moving them, moving them, moving them, hallelujah, into the inheritance that he had promised them. That's what he promises you tonight. When you bring all of this into perspective tonight, hallelujah, uh, you, we, we've got to look down deep inside of ourselves tonight. It's an amazing thing how the how the Christian people let the devil beat them up. Beat them up. Kick them around. When we serve a God tonight that is almighty God. A God that, 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 that is, a, is an all-providing God tonight. An all-seeing God. You see that we can't hide anything from God. We can't hide our hurt and our pain and our misery. We can't hide our weaknesses. We can't hide what's going on in our life. God is an omniscient God. He knows everything about us tonight. He understands us tonight. Deep down inside, He knows what is going on. He knows what we need in our lives. Lord, give us our mountain tonight. God, help us to receive our mountain tonight, Lord. The blessing that we need in our life. Hallelujah. I believe, brother, that in this place tonight that there, there is something going on. I, I, I believe that in our minds that God is steering us. Uh, we might have bad health. Maybe, maybe we need healing. We may have relational problems. I don't know. We might have family problems. I don't know. We might have financial problems. I don't know. I don't know what it may be. We may have God problems tonight. I don't know. But I do know, hallelujah, that God is still on the throne. God can still be reached by the saints of God. There could be a turnabout here tonight in our lives. God is able to do that. Brother, he's done it before. Blind Bartimaeus sits by the wayside. Hallelujah. Blind, 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 blind. The Jesus comes by and they look up on the Lord. What would you have? He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. He is saying, Lord, give me my mountain. Representing the sight that he needed. And the Bible said that he was healed. There's a woman with an issue of blood for 18 years. Amen. Amen. Crying, just trying to get a hold of the hem of the garment of Jesus with a blood issue. And she said, if I can just but touch him, I know that I she'll be made whole. And brother, when she touched his heart, the helm of his God, she was made whole. That's what we can do tonight. Lord, give me my mountain. Give me my mountain. The apostle Paul said, I count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb that I may win Christ. Brother, you have Christ tonight. You have everything that you need, amen, to receive your mountain tonight. God does not renege on his promises. 
God does not lie when he speaks to you. He that comes to me, I want to know why it's cast out. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He tells you in the word what he is able to do. We've got to come and desire, Lord, give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Brother, when you read the scriptures, oh, Caleb got that mountain too. Oh, Caleb got that mountain. Hallelujah. I would to God that in this day in which we live in the church age, that we could have revivals. Thank God that had a simplistic childlike faith in, in the audience and in the pulpit. Hallelujah. That we just take God at his word and say, Lord, this is what you said. I believe it. I was, I was preaching the other day and I, I said this and I do this. I don't mean to be irreverent to God. But sometimes, uh, br brother pastor, I, I read to God his word. I said, Lord, this is what you said. This is what you said. I'm just trying to live it. Lord, you know I'm weak. You know my faith is weak. But Lord... I'm just trying to tell you what you said. Now, Lord, make it come to pass in my life. I believe that we serve that kind of God tonight. We serve Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. We serve a God tonight that's greater than any need that you may have in your life. That's who he is. The Bible said that the Caleb holy followed the Lord. He holy followed the Lord. Life is filled with its ups and downs. Life is filled with hurt and pain and misery. You come here tonight, you, you, you're not uncommon. We've all gone through that. We've all gone through that. I was telling the people at Pine Mountain Church Sunday night in the message that I had a heart attack I, since I've been here last, I guess, two years ago. and I thought I was going to die, and they thought I was going to die. I told them that when I had that heart attack, I didn't want nobody around me. I was depressed. I was defeated. I didn't know what I was, who I was, or what I wanted to be. It didn't make any difference. I lived or died. And I went that way for a long time until God got a hold of me and began to show me who I was, that I was a child of God. Amen. And that I wasn't, didn't have to beg and plead with Him. Amen. That I was on speaking terms with Him. And brother, I got down on my knees and I cried out. I said, God, help me. Help me. What else did you say, brother? Preacher, I didn't say nothing, but God help me. Help me, that's all I could say. I don't know if I had the faith to say anything more, but I want to say to you tonight, brother, sister, that God help me. And I want to say to you, He'll help you. He'll help you. I don't care what you've been taught. I don't care what Dr. Tinkling symbol says or sounding brass. God loves you and God will help you tonight and lift you to new dimensions of the Lord. He will, he, he will grow your faith and increase your faith. He will make you to know that God is real tonight. Yes. Amen. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. How serious you are, are you tonight about, about receiving something from God? You got to get out of yourself. You got to get in in the Holy Spirit. And you got to listen to Him. Speak to your heart. Speak to speak that soft voice to you, wooing you, drawing you. And as Caleb was in that Arabian desert, look up and know that God is real and that God is intent on blessing him. Regardless of what happens to the rest, Caleb is going to be blessed. Why? Because God promised it. And all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus the Lord. Don't tell me that God can't save. Don't tell me that God can't heal. Don't tell me that God can't mend families. Don't tell me that God can't mend relationships. Don't tell me that God can't bless you. God can bless you in spite of yourself. God is able to bless you tonight. That's the God that we serve, the God that blessed Caleb all these years ago. Hallelujah. Brother, we need to rekindle our faith tonight. We need to have assurance, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory to the divine. We need to know that standing at the right hand of the Father tonight is our blessed Lord and Savior that went to the cross and bled and died an ignominious death for every one of us here tonight. Thank God that we might know Him. Hallelujah. And come with confidence to Him tonight and say, Lord, give me my mouth. Lord, give me my mountain. Lord, give me my mountain. Amen. You got, you got to want it more than anything. When you want it more than anything, God.
will open his hands. God will open his hand. God will do exactly what he promised to do and even more. Thank God if you need more. That's the kind of God that we serve tonight. Brother, sister, I, 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 uh, I'm of the old school. I've tried my best to, to adapt to some of this new stuff, but I can't do it. God knows I can't do it. Brother, I was brought up in an old church. I remember when I was a boy and went to church. Hallelujah, we had them old plank uh, pews in there. I told somebody when I went home at night, I felt like a zebra. Amen. I was spotted all over from laying all over them. I was preaching revival many years ago down in Ivanhoe, Virginia, and Brother, uh, Brother Gravely was there, and I told him he was a pastor. I said, Brother Gravely, do you remember me? You stick my head off the back pew, and all you'd see was my head about 11 o'clock at night. Them people having church. And amen, I'd stick my head out. And, 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 and you know what I was doing to you? I was cussing you under my breath. I want to go home. I want to go home. Brother, that before I was saved, I want to go home. I was tired, tired. But brother, those people have in church. There's are people getting saved 11, 12 o'clock at night. People, amen, being filled with the Holy Spirit. People, amen, knowing that God was real. They didn't have a lot of education. Hallelujah. But I'll tell you one thing. They had an earnestness down in their heart and a hunger for God. And brother, God failed it. And God gave them exactly what they wanted. What they wanted. Amen. I remember, and I'll close with this, when I was 22 years old, meaner than a double-headed rattlesnake. I was. I was mean. 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 I'd been in car wrecks, thought I was dead, and God had his hand on me. But I, I, I'll never forget it. I told this to the church a while back. We had a we had a black man, he was almost 90 years old. Old man, the end of his shoes was out, had an old hat, holy, holes all in his hat, wore an old top coat all the time, if it's 90 degrees. And he had an old cabin right across from a store that my mother owned. I was sitting there one day, Doug and will forget it. Here I was drinking, drinking, having a good time sitting there on that porch. That old man was over there, he didn't have nothing. He didn't have a can of beans to eat. That man was happy, and I couldn't understand that. Couldn't understand. And, and I heard something over in those woods. And he began to say, started out to find me a better home. And when it did, my hair stood up on my head. And the power of God, conviction came across that road and got on me. And I was ashamed, ashamed of myself. And, brother, I knew that that man had something that I couldn't find in that bottle. I knew there was something real. Hallelujah about that. And, brother, that night that Linda and I got saved, 45 years ago at the old Methodist church, and got up in the... I felt clean and pure. And I began to feel what that man did. I'll tell you something. It's been 45 years. It's just as good tonight as it was then. God is just as real tonight as he was then. He hasn't changed. And brother, he's able to help you tonight. Sister, he's able to help you tonight. And he's able to do for you. Lord, give me my mountain. Lord, give me my mountain. That's all Caleb could answer before the Lord. And the Bible declares that God gave it to us. God gave it to him. God gave it to him. Would the musicians come? Whoever wants to come, would it come? Would it come? Amen. Church, would you stand with us tonight? Brother Doug, come and right in front of me here, if you would, please.